Hello everyone, this is Jacob Ames, Applications Engineer with Hawk Ridge Systems, here today to discuss 3D printing quality settings within SOLIDWORKS. In today's age of 3D printing, once inconceivable manufacturing projects can now be brought to life right under desktop. But whether you're using a desktop size Mark Forged or an industrial high-powered HP Jet Fusion, you're probably starting in the same place, and that's going to be SOLIDWORKS. Now, while there are a variety of factors that can influence the quality of your finished product on the hardware side, there are some settings in SOLIDWORKS that can be adjusted to create the best possible surface finish and detail for your 3D print. So we're going to take a look at those today, but first I want to talk about this model. I've got a stoneware mug that I developed here, and the reason I wanted to use this design for this project is because there's not a single straight line on it. You can see everything is curved. There's lots of intricate, high detail design work built into it, and we want this to come through in our 3D prints. The truth is, if you're working with mostly prismatic parts, you're probably not going to have to worry about your print quality settings too much, but on a part like this, it's really going to show up if you don't have a high quality mesh file. So 3D printers do typically use mesh files for printing, which are tessellated approximations made up of triangles to represent your CAD model, and that's what these settings actually influence. So let's go take a look at how we can adjust those. First place you want to look is system settings. Go ahead and click that gear here. And we're going to choose the export category. This is where you'll find all of your file formats in the drop down. And we want to choose STL. In addition, we also have AMF and 3MF formats, which are also mesh files for 3D printing. Uh, STL is just the most common. But that being said, if you have a multicolor printer, you may consider using 3MF because it does support appearances. So looking at STL, and by the way, these settings are very similar for any of those formats. So the same rules apply here. But unique to STL is the output as. We have two options, either binary or ASCII. Typically, here you want to go with binary because the result is a much smaller file. But if you need to make adjustments with a text editor, for example, or if you have legacy equipment that can only process ASCII, you can use that mode. You want to set your units properly, of course, and then we get to the fun part, resolution. This is what ultimately controls the, the finished resolution of your project uh, by increasing or decreasing the number of triangles and the deviation in angular tolerances between them. So if you use coarse, you're going to see facets. You're going to see those triangles in the finished print. Fine increases the number of triangles and the deviation and angle between them, which uh, does a little bit better job. And for most projects, this is probably going to be okay. But if you want to take it even further for the perfect surface finish, you'll likely want to choose custom. And then you can manually adjust the sliders for deviation and angle. Sliding these to the right will adjust the tolerance and make it a lower value. So we're tightening those tolerances to get that nice surface finish. More triangles is naturally going to equal a larger file size, so beware there. You really don't want to crank these up too much. You just want to adjust them so that you can have that nice surface finish. Now the difference between these two, deviation and angle, is a little bit subtle. But effectively, deviation controls the overall tessellation of the entire model. So turning this up is like using a global mesh control. Angle, on the other hand, is for that really fine, small detail. So if you had a prismatic part with some detail work, you may want to turn the angle up a little bit further, too. I typically don't go past maybe one or two degrees here because the file size starts to get very large. In deviation, I honestly like to leave somewhere near the middle, but you're likely going to need to do a little bit of experimentation here and find the settings that work well for you. That's really all there is to it. Once you have those settings selected, simply say OK, and then we can go ahead and save this out as a mesh file. It's a simple save as. You choose your file type, STL, AMF, 3MF, whatever you would like. And also note here that you do have that same page of options that can be accessed from the Save As dialog. So there they are once again. Now, I already have these mesh files produced, so let's go take a look at those, starting with Course. And you can see very quickly, I've got uh, shaded with edges on. This is a good way to see the triangles in your design. There are not a whole lot of triangles here. Um, you can see that we're missing some detail in those really small areas. And these facets are going to be both seen and felt in the finished product. And now in many cases, this might be okay. If this is a very rough draft, maybe that's fine. This file size is less than one megabyte. On the other hand, Here's our super fine. I actually took the fine resolution and cranked it up even a little bit further. And there you can see we have way more triangles. We have lots of detail in this intricate design work here. And that's going to come out really nice. You're barely even going to be able to feel those or even see them. So that's what the super fine looks like. This is nearly 30 megabytes. So quite a bit larger. 
but it's going to re produce a really nice surface finish that I think we're going to be happy with. So the last thing we wanted to do here for proof of concept is actually print these files out. So we have some photos of them here. In this case, you can see the coarse version. You can see these facets, you can feel these, uh, and you're really gonna notice that. And then of course, we have our super fine version. Much, much smoother, much nicer, looking really good here. And uh, that's a pretty impressive result for a 3D printer. Now, naturally, there are a variety of hardware factors that are going to influence your finished design. But in this video, we took a look at SolidWorks settings to improve the quality of your 3D prints. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a like, subscribe, or visit us at HawkridgeSys.com. And if you have experience in 3D printing, give us some tips. If you have any suggestions for how to make the best possible surface quality and detail for your 3D printing projects, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.